Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. I'm super excited about today's video and I'm so glad to be back again with you on our regular schedule at Mondays at 9 a.m. Today we're going to answer one of the most frequently asked questions that I'm asked by even licensed electrician. Where are both AFCI and GFCI required? Where you're required to have both of those technologies. Many of us call it dual function and some brands call it dual purpose. So we're going to cover today those required areas. I'm going to be reading from the 2020 NEC, but you know the 17 and the 23 have a lot of similarities. Just make sure you know and understand what code cycle you're on and also your local codes because your area may make it more difficult or they may you know relax it a little bit depending on how your state deals with AFCI and GFCI technology. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing we're going to need to look at is where AFCI protection is required and that's in 210.12 and I do want to note that this covers outlets or devices. Remember, an outlet includes lighting, receptacles, or hardwired. So any one of these type outlets, an outlet is simply where the power comes out at, whether we're hardwiring something, whether it's a receptacle or lighting. So this covers all outlets in these following areas, kitchens, family rooms, living rooms, dining rooms, libraries, parlors, bedrooms, dens, rec rooms, sunrooms, closets, laundry rooms, hallways, or similar rooms, which is up to your, you and your electrical inspector's interpretation. Currently, it does not include the bathroom or the garage or the crawl space, unless, and we're going to learn about the unless here in just a moment. Now let's talk about where we need both. And when we need both is we need to combine both of these sections. We need to combine section 210.8, which is all of your GFCI requirements, and your 210.12 section. So any of the areas that are listed there in 210.12, but also fall into a location or an area that is listed in 210.8 or a type device or a piece of equipment, they're going to require both of those technologies. In kitchens, it's going to include things like dishwashers, garbage disposals, kitchen countertop receptacles, including islands and receptacles within six feet of a sink. In laundry rooms, it's going to include all 120 volt receptacles. 250 receptacles do not require GFCI, or they do require GFCI, but not AFCI yet. So we're going to take that straight from 210.8, our GFCI requirements, and say, hey, we are required to do the dryers, but they're not required to be AFCI yet. Then with exterior receptacles. So currently it does not list that area specifically for AFCI protection, but it does for GFCI protection, of course. But if that circuit is tapped off of one of the general circuits that run through an area or wire in an area that are listed in 210.12, then it would require both AFCI and GFCI technology. Let me explain what I mean. Let's say you're wiring a living room and the back porch is right there and you want to pop right out to the back porch. Nothing wrong with that. Totally code compliant. But since the living room requires AFCI protection and the exterior side requires GFCI protection, when you get to that exterior side, you're now required to have both AFCI and GFCI technology. And that goes for any area where you pop into. So let's say you popped in and did bathroom lighting. It would require AFCI technology if it was tapped off of another circuit somewhere else in the home, like the hallway lighting or something. And then if it had any of the things listed in 210.8, it might also require GFCI technology. Same thing with a garage. If you are in a garage and those lights tap off of the inside hallway, the garage would require to be AFCI protected as well. So it's all about what, you know, it's combining 210.8 and 210.12 and making them kind of mesh together. Let's talk about basements. And this is a new requirement for the 2020, all uh, 250 volt or less receptacles in basements require GFCI protection. Every single one of them. Doesn't matter if it's a dryer, doesn't matter if it's a welder, doesn't matter if it is anything. If you are in a basement, basement by definition, all 120 volt through 250 volt receptacles require GFCI protection. But the 250 volt receptacles do not require AFCI protection just yet. So in basements, all 120 volt receptacles require AFCI and GFCI technology. In crawl spaces, 120 volt receptacles and lighting would require AFCI and GFCI 
if it was tapped from any of the circuits listed in 210.12. So if you came off the dining room, or if you came off the dining room lighting, or if you came off a rec room, or if you came off a sunroom and you went down to the crawl space from there, those areas would require AFCI protection. The crawl space naturally requires GFCI protection on lighting and receptacles. So we are required to AFCI slash GFCI protect that in those locations. But hypothetically, if you were to pull a home run to the crawl space currently in this code, you would not be required to do AFCI protection. But who has money to, to, to do that home run and to buy that extra breaker? So it just doesn't make any sense. And then all other areas, if installed in areas that are listed in 210.12 or tapped from those areas, and they meet the GFCI requirements from 210.8. Now, I always want you to go do your own research. Don't repeat anything in these videos, just use them for educational purposes only, because I want you to go learn how to read 210.12, very easy to read, or 210.8. And you may not have a code book. Code books are very expensive, but I do want to give a shout out to NFPA Link. This is not a sponsored video, but I just want to instill in you the value of NFPA Link. You can actually have access to all of their NECs, 08, 11, 14, you know, 17, 20, 23, and so on and so forth, plus tons of their other codes and standards. I think it's like $9.99 a month, and I think you get a free two-week trial. So you can try it out for free. It's like having the code book in your pocket on your phone or computer anywhere you go. So I highly recommend, don't take my word for it, go study it yourself and learn all the areas that require AFCI protection, then just head over to 210.8 and look at the, all the areas that require GFCI protection. But I can tell you, in my opinion, that it's going to be very shortly that everything requires dual function technology, and I am all for it. Uh, AFCI technology and GFCI technology, I'm not saying that they negate bad work, but when you couple them together, if anything is arcing, sparking, shorting, or leaking current, it's going to shut that circuit off. And I am absolutely all about dual function technology. So I hope that this video added a little bit of value to you today. And my bargain is that you will in turn go add value to other people. If there's anything that I can do to help you in life or in business, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it. Mm -hmm.